Hello, Fabinet Friday number 19, and this week we're going to have a look at a problem that we've been having with our Fanuc Series OITD control and the fact it hasn't been talking to Fusion 360 properly. So, hopefully, in this video, I'm going to have a go at reconfiguring the post processor so that we get a smooth line of co communication from the cam straight to the machine so that we can drill and tap and profile effectively. So, what I've done is I've got a, um, a drill cycle here, and all it does it's just a simple in and out 8 mil drill to the depth of 10 mil. Then you can see that I've got some through drilling so that it just pecks through the bottom of the hole. Try to post that and it says unsupported drilling, drilling orientation, um, work offset has not been specified. And I've tried and tried to get that sorted, uh, thinking it was an error in the way I've defined the cycle in the cam. Um, but actually, what it is, is, is the way the post processor is set up. So if I go into edit, the uh, the post processor and i do a search for g17 then there's a line that's commented out um it says two axis lays typically don't use g17 g17 is a planar select and i did a quick uh, google for that and g17 is the xy plane which of course makes no sense uh, to have a drilling operation on the xy plane on a, on a lathe but for whatever reason as soon as i uncomment this line Save that, close it, and I'll repost it. It gives me a program. Now I tried running this, and it gives me an error on the G17 because obviously it can't drill on the XY plane. We don't have any active tooling. The other problem with the Fanuc is uh, our particular model of Fanuc is. I oh know this is my edit. The default is it will output to G81, which is an undefined cycle. In, in our FANUC controller, we need it to be G83. So what I want to show is how we're going to change the G17 to a G18 and the G81 to an 83, so that it works with the FANUC controller. So if I go into Open Config, do a search for G17, and back in here it says G plane format. So this is some kind of variable. It calls it calls the the G code, then puts the number after it. We want it to be G18. There we go. And it's always worth just commenting. And to comment, you leave a space, two forward slashes, and that just allows you to, um, to show what you've done. I'll do another search, and if I search for, no, it looks like I've changed this, but if I search for 83, in the drilling block, the default for this is 81. That might work for you. For our OITD controller, it didn't work. So I'll change that to 83. Save that. Now when I post the thing, it will give us a G18 and it will give us a G83 and that cycle works. These drill tap combinations are really nice. You get a, um, a spiral tap which basically reduces the amount of pecking that you can do in theory. You should be able to go straight out and the, uh, the swarf and chips will just find their way out unlike a normal tap. We'll get this tightened up. We'll get it datumed and we'll go from there. Right, here we go then. Cycle start. That's looking pretty good. We're just going to drill to a depth. So we're going to touch on now. There we go, perfect. So it looks like our changes to the post processor have worked. It, I should think that feed rate needs to be a bit quicker, certainly in this material. There we go. So with the drilling sorted, uh, next stage is tapping. And I've had a bit of a play around with this. Um, created a tapping cycle. And when I simulate that, everything checks out. Absolutely fine. Unlike the drilling cycle, this one actually goes to post with no problems. And yet, when I run it on the machine, it executes absolutely fine. Obviously, I've replaced it with my tool change macro. Um, it executes absolutely fine, and then it stops at this line. So I've had a good read, and I've had a play around. 
and I ended up working out exactly what every single command does and I get to this M29 and it turns out that that's a general tapping cycle, rigid tapping cycle, it doesn't give a direction. Our control needs to be either told it's left tap or right tap. M27 is right hand tap, M28 is left hand tap, so we need the post processor to alter this value automatically. Open config. I'm going to search for 29 and here we find mformat.format and then brackets 29 as part of a function called write block. So I am, like I said, no programmer, but it should be reasonably obvious that this M format is the M code for M27. So for a case of generic tapping, then we want M29. For a case of left tapping, we want M28. And for a case of right tapping, we want M27. And repost. And we should get that M27. Which we do. So we wrap it in, and then it aligns the spindle, and it's starting to plunge. It's coming out from five millimeters. When it gets to the bottom, it should spindle reverse. So it's looking pretty good. And with these spiral taps, of course, you don't need to do any chip breaking or packing. There we go, reversing. And it's picking up the old hole, which is fantastic. So that means that the, uh, the spindle is aligning itself with the same point every time so that we're actually able to re tap an existing hole, provided we haven't moved the workpiece. That's going to finish, wrap it out of the way. Let's try it one last time. Look at that, absolutely perfect. And even though that's wax, there's not a lot of movement there. So I'm really happy with the progress we've made this week. We've got this lovely eight station tool changer doing what it's meant to do. The whole machine talks to Fusion 360. We can send tool paths there. We've got the tapping and drilling cycles working from a, a broken post processor. So that's some progress. And next week what we'll do is we'll machine up one of the trainee jobs, which is a plumb bob aluminium body. That takes our trainees about three weeks to do on a manual machine because they've never touched a, a machine before that project. Um, it will be quite an eye-opener for them to see this CNC cycle do it in about a minute or two. It'll also be a really good way to test some live tool changes and look at improving some of the, uh, the feed rates and speeds to get some efficient and good finishes. So we'll see you next week. Like, subscribe and comment if you're enjoying these videos. See you next time.